Hi, this is Liz and welcome to my podcast, Spiritually Speaking with Liz. Today I'm joined by the fabulous Adele, Earth of Angel, her business is called on Instagram, which I'll tag in for you down in the show notes. And today we're going to be talking about tarot. So hi Adele and welcome. Hi Liz, hello. It's great to have you here. Lovely to be here. So we're going to go straight in and tell me what got you into tarot? So I have been reading tarot now for 25 years. Um, It isn't until recently that I've actually had the confidence to start doing readings for other people. I've practiced, you know, for years and years, giving samples to friends Mm -hmm. and family. But it took me a long time to actually have the confidence to think, right, I can do this. So now this is obviously what I am doing and I love it. Yes. So 25 years? I didn't realise it was that long. 25 years, yes. I bought my first pack, I think I was 19 years old. I'd had readings myself, which right. I was intrigued by. One lady in particular who I used to go and visit quite a young age, I thought this is something that I would like to delve further into myself. How oh, cool. What was your first deck? The Rider Waite deck was right. the first the first deck, and I've sort of tended to stick to that over the years because I'm so familiar with it um, and it just works well. You know. It's what speaks to you though, isn't it? It is. It We're is. all based on that anyway, aren't they? Yes. But it's I think the, it's the what what draws you. It's the pack that I always go back to. It's sort of my to-go pack. Mm-hmm. Um, I have several different packs, angel cards, goddess cards, and I will use those, but the Rider weight is always the pack that I take. Like the to. meat of the reading. Yes. Do you yes. use a few decks in a reading? I normally carry a couple when I do a professional reading, a one-to-one reading. Again, Rider Waite's always the pack that I will start with. And then I may go on to like the angel deck and ask the lady or gentleman to pick maybe a couple of cards just to finish the reading off, just to sort of mix it up slightly. Mm-hmm. Um, but the rider weight's always my first That's like I to go pack. go to yeah go to pack. I can yeah I can relate to that. I don't if you'll see I've got a few decks down as we're talking, so as you can see that's like new. Yes, I don't use that. This is the one I use, and that's the druid druid yes. craft deck. And that just drew me straight into it. And I can, whenever I'm talking to somebody and things come through, then often they'll show me the pictures of the cards. But if somebody says in another deck, oh, it's the, I don't know, Ace of Cups, then I will picture it in my deck. Yes. Then I know that connects me to it. Are you the same? It's almost like I feel with the cards, they tell a story Mm. and they talk to you. So. Once you've familiarised yourself with a particular deck, I totally agree that, yeah, certain cards will just sort of jump out and you automatically know, you know, the meanings, the story, and, you know, it just all pieces itself together. Yeah, they're like a jigsaw, aren't they? Most people, I find, are just looking for guidance in their life, be it a new job, um, you know, a new home, maybe they're getting married, maybe they're wanting children and struggling slightly, Maybe people are going through a little bit of a financial crisis. Um, there is so many different aspects why people would, you know, choose to have a reading. And you have to use this with quite, you know, a lot of sensitivity as well. So I like mm. to be quite careful of how I'm doing the reading. So I would never tell anybody anything bad or give a really, you know, scary prediction because that person will then go home and basically carry that forward and just worry unnecessarily and it's not very professional so I always try to be as empathic as possible yeah no I I get that and I think I know of people and myself that have been for readings and they've said things that if I'd have really taken that on board that could it could could, really affect it can really affect people's I think mental health so you have to be very careful on how you are portraying, you know, the reading to people, especially when they may be going through a very difficult period in their lives. Absolutely. Do you find that people try to make a reading fit or try to make something happen because you've said it? Yes, I do. And I think with, you know, those type of people, if they're really, like I say, perhaps struggling with things in their life, you've just got to be very careful in how you give the reading and that also relates to not over reading for people so I will always give the information that I get but then I will always say 
you know, t- twice a year is sufficient for a reading yeah. because if not, you're messing with your energy field. You can actually cause yourself to become quite depressed if you have too many readings. People become dependent then, don't they? They become dependent on you. And I know of some readers or heard of some readers that they do, they have people going back every month. And really, you're not actually supposed to read like mm. that. The law is, the, the read the tarot law, from what I have picked up off really good mediums over the years, is you shouldn't have more than two readings a year. Like I say, it can actually cause depression, and it does affect your aura. It can actually put holes in your aura. So it's best to just stick to the two readings a year, once every six months, You also then give the reading time to actually, you know, show itself. Absolutely. Um, Otherwise, you then overlap in the information and it just becomes a great big jumble mess. Yeah, Yeah, no, I get get that. When somebody comes to you for reading, do you give them the choice of what would you like to know about? Would you like to know about your love life? Would you like to know about career or whatever? Or do you just dive in and... No, so what I do is I will always start the reading by saying, this is a guidance only. You are in charge of your own fate, your own destiny. The spirit will come through a lot and help me as well with the cards. So Mm. again, for me, they use massively just as a guidance... I get a lot of information now from Spirit as I'm doing the cards, Mm -hmm. um, which helps hugely, you know, throughout the reading. But what I normally do is I will do, I will offer a 10 card spread that just gives an overview of what's happening in the client's life now, past and what's to come in the future. Mm -hmm. We then go on and we elaborate to sort of three questions, which we will pick three singular cards and again, I ask an individual question which can be said out loud or can be said in the client's head whichever they prefer if they want to keep that private and then we'll do a three card spread which can be quite intense and quite good at answering specific mm-hmm. questions I think that's a, a sign of a true reader that you allow them to say it in the head yes so they're not fishing. I always say please give me a, a, as little information as possible I don't want feeding I'd rather know nothing yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I totally agree with that. When we lived in Spain, and I used to do tarot readings on the phones. Yes. And it was mainly America and Australia. I used to have to get up at stupid hours to do the readings. And they were through, there was like on a on a psychic TV thing yes, over yeah, there that yeah. they'd come through. And it used to annoy me, which is one of the reasons why I left, was that you would somebody would ring for a reading... And you would give them the reading. And if they didn't like what they heard, they'd ring back. Yes. And I know that because sometimes they might come back to you. Because, there's, you know, there's a pool of readers and yes. whoever becomes available. You get So you'd get the same person back. Quality. And I used to, yeah, and I used to find it quite desperate. You know, like, think, when are they coming back? And I got a bit disillusioned with it for a while. I think that's a huge problem with the uh, phone line ones because mm. people, they're so accessible, they mm. cost a fortune, and people who are in really vulnerable positions, it's so easy to just pick the phone up and spend an absolute fortune, yeah. get themselves in debt, and mm. be given a load of information that may not even be correct. I'm not saying for one second they're not legitimate but I think you need to find a good reader and I think you need to stick to that reader rather than hopping from one to the other yeah I agree. um and like I say the the two two a year rule definitely with me I t- yeah I totally agree I mean the work this was an ethical company yes. that I read for yes but there are a lot that aren't yes I mean they're still charging not as high as some but yeah I totally get that that they are that they're wanting to make money a yeah. lot of them right okay i've i've you know i'm guilty of ringing these lines myself when i felt pretty low and you can almost tell sometimes in the reader's voice and what they're saying is they're trying their best to keep mm. you on the phone yeah, yeah and then it all becomes a little bit not quite right mm. so but when you you're dealing with somebody who's vulnerable they won't see that they're just grasping at whatever no. information they can yeah, get hold of yeah and it's you know it's not really the best I think that's why we get a bad rap, because people see that side of it. Yes. And don't realise it. And I used to get, I'd be interested in your spin on this. I used to get from people, 
well, you can't read the person if they're not there in front of you. Now, I read people a lot better when they're not in front of me because I yeah. haven't got the pull of their energy. What are you going to tell me? Yes, yeah. And I ha- I'm not looking at what they're wearing, what rings they've got on or anything like that. I'm totally away from them. And I find that barrier better for me. Yes, yeah, I agree. I, I've done lots of telephone readings and they've all been absolutely no different to mm. face to face mm-hmm. um, I've also done a lot of readings for people who can be quite defensive and they'll sit with their arms folded and, That's hard. and they sort of pull faces and they say no to everything but I just go with it and at the end I'll say you know if you couldn't take any of that information please take it away and just give it chance for some of this to transpire because in spirit there isn't a time scale so things can happen within a day, within, you know, 24 hours. Things might happen five or six years down the line. And I always try to explain this before the readings that not everything happens straight away. Some things might not have happened. Sometimes people forget things that have happened and then yeah. they go away and think, oh gosh, yeah, mm. you know, a John or that was, you know, correct. But at the time they just don't. Yeah, because they're, hei- they're heightened in it, aren't they? Yes. Or, and a little bit nervous, don't yeah. they? Get, a which lot is what... of people are very nervous when they're mm. having readings. And I always say to them, this is a guidance. You are in control of your own life. You know, it's up to you what path you choose. Use it as a guidance, you know, to help you make decisions. But don't set it in stone. Yeah. Don't rule your life by it because that's when it can become... Yeah, no, yeah, it can it become too much. Yeah. So I can remember when we so we met through the shop when I just had the little shop. We didn't did, we? we did. And you came in and said that you were a reader and were looking for somewhere. Yes. And I said, as I always say, I won't recommend anybody that I haven't had a reading from. So you came back the next week, didn't you? I did. And did a reading for me. You were absolutely spot on with what was going on at the time. Thank you. I can remember being quiet. Did I never tell you that? I, <laughs> I, think, I think you actually did. I think, and I actually do. That was a, quite a few years ago, wasn't mm, it? And it's I five actually, years ago. I do vaguely remember mm. doing the reading at the desk. Yeah, it was all quite quick and yeah, but it was we, very accurate, in, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was really, really spot on, really spot on. So in the shop, I get a lot of people asking how they would start to learn the tarot so if you think there's 78 cards isn't there there are yes and i think i remember when i started wanting to like you early age kept buying decks because i was drawn to them but then i'd look at them and i'd be like oh my god 78 cards how am i ever gonna it takes a long learn this so i'm interested from i'll say mine afterwards but i'm interested from your point how would you advise somebody so they've just got the first deck of cards They want to start working with them. How would you advise them to do that? Right, so I would say each morning when you wake up and when your mind's, you know, pretty clear, I would sit, I would perhaps do a meditation. Personally, that's what I would do, a meditation. And then I would pick one card per day, no more, Mm -hmm. because I think you just over-confuse yourself. If you start picking too many, and then you pick up the book, you start to read the descriptions, it all becomes very jumbled. So I personally would pick one card, and I would study that card. So I would look at the picture, and I would look at the background of the picture. I would look, for example, if there was sea, trees, a sun, a child, and I would just let whatever came into my head explain mm-hmm. that card t- to myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So it's almost like whatever jumps out from that card, I would think, right, okay, so there's the Ace of Cups. It's just a cup with water overflowing. That doesn't make a lot of sense. But I would try and tune into that card. And also, when you go on to pick another card, So when you start picking two cards, you can then start linking the cards together. And it takes a long time. That's the hardest to link, It takes a long time. Um, It's taken me years and years to actually read the cards on a professional level where the information just flows. Mm -hmm. I used to have to get books out and I'd be reading Mm. them and then I'd confuse myself and I'd be like, I can't do this, I can't do this. And that's why I haven't done it up until now. Some people are given the gift from a very early age and I think that's when the clairsentient 
is is bought in so that's mm-hmm. different but when you're just reading cards solely it can take a long time to actually learn how to piece them together and actually tell a story mm-hmm. well they're just a tool really aren't they for your intuition they are. They but they're, are. Like a, they're like a i learned them i'll be perfectly honest as a as a backup crutch because yes. I didn't fully trust my intuition. So I yeah. thought, if I've got the cards as backup, if I get stuck, I can look at the cards and think, Ace of Cups, that's the start of a new romance, cup overflowing, that type of thing. Yeah. And it would just be that security blanket. That's why I yeah. learned them. Yeah, definitely. So I learned them slightly different. I had a teacher and she told me, which... I tell people because I find it quite useful. It confuses them a bit in the first instance. But I tell them to split the deck into major arcana, minor arcana. Put the minors away. And then they've got 22 cards to do a day at a time. Yes. So the first card, zero, is the full, isn't it? So that's the new beginnings, the new start, setting off on your journey. You've got all the tools in your little knapsack, but you don't really know that just yet. And then you go on and you meet the high priestess, and then you go on and meet the magician. And then it's the the follow-through, the story of the fool's journey. And if you're not sure about that, you could Google it, and then it'll give you the information that way. Also, you could... What I like to do is to get the card and then look at it, and then, like you said, really study the card. What's there? Is the land? Is the water? Look at whatever's jumping out, perhaps, yes. But then to take that card out into the day. So where is the representation of the fool in your day, the new beginnings, the new starts, and look at it that way, I find. Yes. Um, Then I tell them when they've done that, and to make it, like you said, you can meditate on them and do like a journal. Then I tell them to split the minor arcana into the pip cards, the ace to the tens, and then the court cards out. And then just focus on the ace to the tens because they're a story, aren't they? So they like are. the cups, it's like that new beginnings, the excitement of meeting somebody, offer the, of love. the offer of love, the engagement, the celebration, then the feeling a bit of apathy and yeah. is this and it, it goes through it, doesn't it? And it I think does. they all do that. And then to study the court cards. I, I find the court cards the hardest. I find, I'm just trying to think which ones I find the hardest. I find it difficult when I get a mix of quite a lot of negative cards in one reading. Right. I struggle with that uh, because normally the client who's looking at the cards can tell mm. this is full of swords and death and you know, and you can see almost a shock on their face and it's like, right, help me please, help me. But it's, it's, a, it's a hard one, but then like as you do and as I do, it's that... Saying, like, to me, the worst card in the deck for me is the Eight of Swords. Oh, really? Mm. And yet, for me, it's the Devil. I right. do not like the Devil. The Eight of Swords, to me, is about more in your own mind. Exactly. So You're stuck in your own mind. Yeah, the entrapment. Of I'm feeling. a Virgo, it's me. <laughs> so am I. So am I. I'm a Virgo. But for me, that, yeah, it's the, the Eight of Swords is that being trapped it's your own mind you're trapped by and you've got the freedom to get out but it's you just can't quite do it yeah Yeah. eight and nine of swords i'm a little bit i don't like the nine of swords that's definitely sleepless Mm. nights a lot of of worrying sleepless nights i i like that even less than the ten of swords because with the ten of swords even though you are at your absolute lowest you can only rise like a phoenix is from it, that point. So, yeah, whereas the nine of swords is ongoing, yeah, sleepless it's, it's, nights yeah, of yeah, worry. Yeah. yeah, no, I get that. The lady that taught me, where well, she used to call them like there's mini major arcanas through the minor arcana. Okay. So she would say like the ten of swords is the mini death card. Ah. So it's the end of. That's interesting. A, like she would say, I won't use the language she'd use it. It's quite <laughs> colourful, but she'd say. It's dead as a... And there's nothing else that can happen now. Yeah, yeah. You know, so like ten of wands. Can't get any worse. Ten of wands. You, you, your load's... You've broken your shoulder, you collapse, you, you're struggling up the hill with it. Yeah. And But it's the end of you coming up to then the new starts. Yes, Isn't yeah. it? So it's the like the ends of... Yes, yeah. Yeah, that is a good way of explaining. Mm. I liked, yeah, I liked that. And what were the other ones? I can't think now off the top of my head. Um, Eight of Pentacles, Mini Magician. Ah, mm. so work, skills. Yeah. 
and just and and knowing that you've got all that and that you can turn it into what you anything want anything you want work, yeah, yeah normally work wise isn't it yeah. quite work related yeah there's a, but like I said to you I, the, I find it harder linking the cards yeah still and now I can people, struggle with that sometimes people will ring me up people who I know do readings themselves and they'll say how the heck do I link these cards together I'm really struggling and I said it will just come it's like a story and again if you ask spirit for me a lot of it just comes out of my mouth mm -hmm. without me even realizing what i'm saying so i know that i've got a link with spirit as the cards are being laid for me now these are just a guidance yeah is and there a tool yeah like they're to help, help, mm. help to help with the reading yeah they're just there as backup for you i think Most it's definitely. And, and focus but it's weird when you think that these things have been around since the 1750s they say don't they and sometimes i think they can be a bit outdated in some ways but then in other ways, when you look, it's how we translate it, isn't it, yes. now into yes. modern day. Yeah. So like the Three of Swords, I don't know what that would have been in the 1750s, but to me I see that as the divorce card. Or interfer normally divorce with sometimes interference. That's why the, th the yeah, three, three or another per yeah or a, or a divorce or yeah or another yes. person in the relationship like an affair. Yeah. But then also because I teach people how to read them as an empowerment tool, as a spiritual development tool, then it can also be a divorce from the old ways. Okay. And moving away from the old ways. And it can also mean heart surgery. If it's next to the Four of Swords, I often oh, really? um, say that can be the hospital. I sometimes think that the Four of Swords for me can be a hospital card. It comes okay. up a lot for people yeah. when I'm doing readings who I've got an upcoming hospital appointment, especially maybe an operation or something booked. So if I get the Three of Swords next to the Four of Swords, I almost always think that it's some type of heart surgery. Oh, wow. Oh, that's interesting. It's very interesting. I love it. it, it honestly, I could it talk about it. It blows you away. It's amazing how the meanings just sometimes blow you out of the water yeah. it's like wow they really do they really do and i think it's something that i always say to the the person the queerant as they call them in the old days i love that word i know i always say to them be careful how you word your question because you I have to be very very yes. clear mm. very clear you are asking the cards like you would be asking a friend a question. So when you ask the cards a question, you have to be so clear in your asking. Otherwise, that can actually confuse the cards. Exactly, and they can be. I find they can be a little bit tricky. A bit. It can be a bit um, mishmash if that yeah. if it's not said mm. clearly enough. Yeah, they do. They do amuse me for readings. Then, so you do readings over the phone. I do. I do face to face, and I do over the phone. Do you do any like Skype or anything like that? Uh, or what, I haven't Zoom or as of yet, but right. I'm sure that's something that I could possibly could look do. at. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So if you wanted to contact Adele at Earth of Angel, I'll put the details in the show notes below. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. I've for really enjoyed me. this. It's I been think, wonderful. I keep saying this to everybody because I get excited, but I think we'll have you back, please, and we'll talk. Maybe you could do some some form of teaching mini with the sample, tarot. Mini yeah. sample readings. Yes, or... that would be a good one. A big thank you because I know you're not feeling very well. Adele's I am so sorry. <laughs> I apologise profusely for doing this whole podcast with what sounds like I've had a peg on my nose the whole time <laughs> I am you. absolutely my sinuses are totally blocked so I do apologize for the yeah very sure strange that, voice I'm sure they'll be more <laughs> interested in the information than they have in the blocked sinuses. I don't normally sound like this I promise well thank you so much for joining thank you for having me Liz I'll put the details in the show notes below of Adele and if you want to contact me it's the usual email address spiritually speaking 222 at gmail.com or the instagram and facebook details i will put below as well as adele's page too thanks so much for joining me i hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have and i will speak to you again soon bye